Look at you. Man, we have, a, we have an amateur. <laughs> we're not sure where we're we are an amateur right running this program but, right uh, now. We're it's, am hey. it's amateur hour Be at careful. DTLT today. Welcome to like DTLT awesome. today. Today. This today. is... <laughs> introduce yourself. I am Tim Owens, a.k.a. Timmy Boy. I'm Andy Rush, a.k.a. Andy Rush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim Groom. That's all you need to know. And I'm a student aide who got in here by accident. Do you accident. have an actual name? My name is Leo Zabub. And you played a also very Lee important Ellis. role in DS106. What was that this summer? Oh, my God, yeah. I was Bianca. Bianca Oblivion. Welcome, Bianca. Bianca Oblivion. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today, Timmy? Well, first off, I see that uh, someone has a new computer that we've been awaiting an arrival for quite a while here. Oh, would you be talking about me, Timmy uh, Boy? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know it's easy to forget it's there because it's probably so light. All right, and, and I, I seriously like have to apologize to my colleagues because I've been going on and on about this and how bad my life is without the computer. And now now my life is so great with this computer. Complete. So, um, this is the new MacBook Air. It's like I can spin it around on my on my pinky. <laughs> Just don't. But let's not do just, that. Just, just don't, because then I'll have to go through this whole process and order another one. And and let me tell you, it's the if you want any sympathy for me, it is a pain in the ass to try to get your life from one computer to the next. But I know you don't have There's, any sympathy yeah, for me, no. so never mind. It's a nice. And we, um, and we were nice. joking about how hard I have it, but if we're going to go for the Apple love... I did get an iPhone 4S, so that's right. My, it's not all bad for me. Apple right fanboy now. A, Exhibit A, and Exhibit B. And he's been he's, he's been talking to Siri constantly. I have. Exactly. He's got her, my, my he's wife got her shares the master. bed with a new woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Timmy, move over. Yeah. <laughs> Timmy, stop snoring. I cannot do that, Tim. So. Timmy, get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> so life is generally good yeah. in DTLT land except for some toys that we're trying to yeah, get so, working. Uh, first off... Siri joined this chat room. <laughs> first off, George Meadows, amazing Thank you, George. member at UMW. He's Education been, Department, College of Education. Yeah, George he's, Meadows. He's in the process of buying a MakerBot, uh, takes us out to Chipotle, and really? he brings over the parts today hey. for oh, a sense. brand new... Pirate box. Yep. So he brings a bag full of this stuff. This is just part of it, but there's not a whole lot more to it than this. This is a Buffalo um, wireless router, and this is an energizer pack um, for a battery, basically to store it on and to, to get it all plugged in and working. So I start looking at the instructions today, playing around with it, and it didn't take me very long to completely brick this thing. So I have to figure out how to. <laughs> um, so when you brick it, what do you do to get it back? You have to uh, run some like terminal commands to send some new firmware back onto it, uh. and I'm just having trouble connecting to it. So he actually asked me if we had a Windows XP machine yeah. <laughs> running somewhere it's, it's in, that in the area. <laughs> so that's so, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. So. Um, but yeah, so we've got, we're going to have our own pirate box. It, it'll belong to George, and I told him that if I get it all working, he's got to find a good hiding spot in Trinkle near some classrooms and have it running all day, and we'll see if some students are, will connect to it. And we've got to figure out a good name to give it, something that cool. entices students to yeah. join it and start adding things. Well, I think what we need to do is get a couple of them. So we do this one as, a, as, a, as an example, and then we use that, and I think... One of the things that really got me interested with the Pirate Box, I was lucky enough to just spend two days in New York City uh, with the great Grant Potter, Mikhail Gershevich, Boone Gorgas, um, Luke Waltzer, Dr. Garcia, um, with a whole ton of folks, uh, some who I'm forgetting, Michael Branson Michael, Smith. Yeah. Um, so we all went in there and um, we presented on DS106 Radio on Wednesday night. But then on Thursday, and maybe, maybe we'll talk about that on another show, but on Thursday I went to this thing with Grant. I kind of hacked the conference. I didn't pay or anything, called ConnectCon. And ConnectCon was a conference run and organized by um, Douglas Rushkoff, who's kind of becoming a, a mouthpiece for a lot of the kind of moment we're in with Occupy Wall Street, the Internet, new forms of protest, all this stuff. Um, but anyway, he put together this conference, I'm sure with other people, and the idea of it was to bring a whole bunch of hackers and kind of radical thinkers together and by the end of the day have them build and create something or an idea that they can get funded. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so 
people did that and there was kind of, I mean, I think the kind of pressure on people to, you have to do something was something else, but really cool things. One of the highlights of that conference, Steve Johnson, who, where good ideas come from, he wrote that book, mm -hmm. and Gardner mm -hmm. had talked about him a lot. He was there and we had a couple of people, there was no long presentations, came up and talked for three minutes about an interesting idea mm -hmm. about what this means. Steve Johnson gets up there and for three minutes he talks about good ideas often come from taking something from one context, like art or design, and moving it into another, like chemistry or something. Mm -hmm. They said more than that, um, good ideas often come from taking stuff that's considered old technology and reimagining it as new, like Grant Potter's doing. And right. I was like, Grant, that's exactly. Right. So his stuff really t keyed into the stuff we've been thinking about. Yeah. But what's trippy about ConnectCon is all these people came there and they had their like inventions. So there's this thing called the Freedom Box, which is pulling off of the Abe Mogul, yeah. Mogul's idea of everybody have their own kind of identity space where they do their email, they do their stuff, and it's not using this kind of corporate infrastructure. On that, they also had the Freedom Tower, which was a kind of locally created, you wholesale by bandwidth, and you have your own network node for the internet, and that's what's actually fueling Occupy Wall Street right now. The guy who's doing that is there. Wow. And so then there was this other dude who had this kind of emergency broadcast radio system mm -hmm. and cell phone system where you switch, will switch out SIM cards or even have a SIM card it will read, and you can create a like closed network of communication, like if everything goes down, the phone lines and stuff. And I want to do that after the pirate box. I want to build a closed <laughs> network of texting and phone lines and all that stuff on UMW and see if people use it. That's cool. Like have an entire closed network that anyone doesn't have to be on a major network to do anything. Talk about getting rid of surveillance and all that. Think about what we could do outside of the black box and like RIAA, MPAA, no one <laughs> would know anything. I mean, it would yes, be Yes, that would be amazing. So that's where the stuff is going. They're calling it mesh computing. Nodal computing is another mm -hmm. word for it. Well, and that's what I kind of wonder with the pirate box. Are you able to set them up as nodes where they can communicate with each other? Do you know? Well, I um, bet you that's because that's, that's what cool. the other coolest part, and this goes to your question. That's why I was segueing in it. Yeah, forgive me, <laughs> forgive me for my roundabout uh, segue, but Timmy Boy's better than me. Yeah. We have a 50 minute, I only kind of half mean that. We have a 50 minute recording. So Grant Potter got in touch with the dude who invented the idea for the pirate box. And he was like, hey, dude, you know how Grant Potter is. He's like, hey, man, guess what? It's like this guy, David Dart, who was amazing and who I want to be the keynote speaker at Faculty Academy this year, um, is an art professor at NYU. And he was like the traditional, like, New York artist with black, right? He was kind of like hanging out. Like, we didn't know what to expect. He had this completely, like, minimalistic office with nothing but two pirate boxes on his desk. I saw a it's picture been, from that. I awesome. thought, is that an empty apartment? Is there anything no, in there? No, it's his office. <laughs> and it's <laughs> rad. It's like, you know, downtown New York, awesome real estate, hmm. um, NYU. So this guy starts talking, and he's brilliant. He starts articulating the idea of the pirate box as kind of a, you know, an intervention into questions of privacy, identity, surveillance, and... The idea is he wanted his students to be able to share files anonymously. Mm -hmm. And so he built this as a way for he bring it in and they could share whatever they want on the space. It's an easy way to distribute it, but they also mash up like a car commercial and they put it back in there. So it becomes this collection of student work. But he also started to bring it out into public <clears throat> space and see who would use it and how they would use it. And it's kind of for him been an art project and it went viral. You know, he got a million hits, and he talks about the whole process, but he also talks about the conceptual space behind it. And it's really amazing. Um, he's a really solid thinker. He's a really articulate about it, and he really created something cool. And what's cool about the Pirate Box is the Pirate Box is a conceptual thing that now, thanks to Alan, thanks to mm -hmm. Noise Professor, thanks to George Meadows, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get my head around conceptually. And it's a short conceptual leap from that to the idea of the Freedom Box right. and the idea of the Freedom Network. So it's this really cool kind of um, relationship between the three that Definitely. I'm fascinated by. And what's more is I'm going to have that 50 minutes of radio and we're going to talk to I'm going to kind of coordinate with Grant and hopefully get that up. Because yeah. it's some of the best, I think, uh, discussions just about the state of ed tech. And the fact that he's an art, his, he's an art professor, a fine arts professor, 
who's um, dealing with this stuff in some really unique and creative ways, and he's actually from Vancouver. Mm-hmm. He's a freaking Canadian like everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's everybody. Really. Yeah. So um, that was really cool. New York was amazing, but it was particularly amazing to hear a David Darts is his name again, talk about the pirate box and where that, that idea came that from. That does sound like super it's cool. It's amazing. And I have the audio, so me and Grant will really get that out there. Yeah, once you post it, I'll put a link to it in the show notes for Perfect. this episode. Um, and I assume you'll be blogging about it as well, so people are... Yeah, and I was so excited when I heard that George was getting this stuff. <laughs> That's a great And picture. then when he got it, it is a great picture. And then when he actually got it, it was so mint. I mean, yeah. I was telling this guy... Um, just how excited I was. And what was cool about this guy is he was bald, he had all black, and then he had a black eye. So, like, like I was like, how did he get a black, a black eye? eye? Like, someone oh had knocked God. him in the eye. So, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> like, hmm. But, man, when I started hearing him talk, I was like, back the got to me. Yeah. You know, like, right on. And so. Did you all talk about the story box and what Cog Dog's doing? Absolutely. We talked about the story box. We talked about, you know, it was interesting because the artist, he really did just think of it as an experiment. Sure. And... Cogdog does too, but they have two very different experiments because he kind of wants to jar the idea of public space, right. whereas Cogdog's trying to invite people in yeah. to right. do it. So the renaming of it is something we talked about, mm-hmm. and the imagination. And I think he, this guy was really cool because he understood that people are going to kind of just play with the idea, and you know it's a good idea when it generates all these possibilities like right. Cogdogs and stuff. Right. And he also was in touch with the people who were doing the Freedom Box. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, do you want to kind of keep developing? He's like, really? I consider myself an artist. Like, I'll do this stuff as a provocation. Sure. But not, I'm not necessarily a techie who's right. going to be developing this stuff out or be able to support it. Mm-hmm. But I just loved that it was an artist that was doing this. Yeah. Not like mm-hmm. a techie. And I love that different imagination um, you bring to it, you know, from different disciplines. Well, I really... No, I mean, ahead. I really think that, like, in, you know, being a creative writing major, I think that, like, you know, literature and books, like, a lot of, like, like technology and stuff, I mean, I mean, w- we do have a lot to offer, in my opinion, to, like, the science community mm-hmm. and just the generation and the creative ideas that, like, the art um, side kind of, you know, it, we have, like, great ideas, and that's why I hate, you know, seeing, like, the cutting the funding for... Stuff like that and humanities, whatever. Well, that's, that's just it. Is it you, you know, n- none of these disciplines do it on their own. You know, and and having all those contributions is is the valuable thing. And so you, when you cut one thing, especially the creative side of of the curriculum, it's 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 nobody knows the damage that it does. But what stands out to me, uh, we talked a little bit. You know, we didn't get to hear the keynote from Seth Godin at Educause, but one thing that Gardner Campbell tweeted. And I don't know if it was a direct quote from Seth Godin or if it was something that Gardner was saying, was that you don't have a job, you have a platform to create art. Mm. And it was just, you know, it was just a really profound statement in that, yeah. that all of us have this platform where we can create art and do this kind of stuff. I don't know if you probably didn't get a chance to hear it, but Scott Lowe was on the DS106 radio today. And one of the things they were talking about was a art project called Webcam Head, um, where oh, yeah. there's this art installation in Manchester in the UK. Uh, and it's just this uh, faceless figurine made out of acrylic or something with a webcam. And they can't see anything. There's no screens there, but they can hear. And it's this Skype name that you can call. Anybody can call this Skype name and immediately see this cafe. And they can hear you. You can see and hear them, but you're completely anonymous at that point. And wow. you're talking to these people. Trippy. And so it's Scott Lowe. Uh, on the radio called in and was trying to get people to talk to him but nobody was walking up to the uh, faceless head <laughs> and talking to him so and this is in an art gallery in manchester or a cafe in a cafe like it's so cool in the of manchester. and that's very similar to the stuff that this guy david darts is thinking yeah he had this other project he called parasite where he basically walks around with a camera on his body <laughs> and he just takes photos and one of the things about new york city that's interesting is you have all these open networks sure. so anytime he comes onto an open network it uploads immediately to that network. Wow. Oh, that so is off crazy. Of his body, you know, and that kind of feels like physical to virtual, and it's going to these strange places. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, hacking on open parasitical networks. I wonder what those people think when it's they get this, this stuff. Guy. Well, sometimes it often happens that you could use it, you get it up there, and it creates a video uh, link so that you can go and watch him. Oh, so neat. Walking through the walking. city. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. Stuff. Yeah, it's really weird. It's cool. God, that'd be so cool just thinking, like, doing that the Skype thing, like, at the nest or something. Mm-hmm. Well, that's 
Maybe I could do that as part of this project that I'm thinking of, you know, the story project at UMW where I'm trying to, well, I'd like to, uh, to take stories from people in the UMW community and then, um, you know, like, I was thinking mostly audio kind of thing, but just to, like, get a sense of, you know, overall, like, what it means to be, like, a UMW community member during, like, the 2011, you know, 2012 um, academic year. Mm -hmm. And that would be, like, super cool if I could just, you know, have, like, a... Uh, have one of those like um, the 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 face you know the head yeah. things and have people like Skype in and stuff or just you know and tell or even make something way. like that and and put like some monument on it and put a story box inside of it or a yeah. fire box and that's where they share cool. it. I mean that's another thing like you could really share some having a few pirate box and then freedom boxes around campus and using our network as a place to kind of run a parallel network to infrastructure IT would be subversive. so rad and so I think subversive. that's where we need to go the video <laughs> the audio and the alternative networks gotta play some like teaching and learning delivery. is only a part of what we do <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it's getting fun I think it I hear IT security fun. coming up the yeah. stairs so <laughs> we should wrap it up for this episode yes right. we should Thanks great to see great watching. to see all you Chat people out there, thanks yeah, for joining did we, us. Yeah, did we pay any attention to the chat? Should we? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, They're uh, talking amongst themselves, you know. How as they do. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thanks I love coming. it. It's like when people are like, hey, here's my idea. Discuss. Yeah. <laughs> really? I want to punch people when they say discuss. It's like, no, you discuss it if it's such a good idea. <laughs> so discuss that. <laughs> amongst <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> Later. Take care, guys. Later.